we start out with a clean VXWorks image project in Windriver Workbench. Let's name it TC Demo VXWorks 2. And uh, we're using the VXWorks simulator for this project. Now it's copying the files into the workspace. and then we build the project just to check that it works. Then we start it in the simulator. Okay, looks good. To make sure the tracing library is enabled in VXWorks, we open the kernel configuration. Make sure that system viewer support is included. This enables the standard tracing library in VXWorks, used also by Tracelizer. There is a lot of settings here, but the default settings are fine in this case. Typically, you don't need to change these, but they can be used to optimize the performance of the tracing. For instance, if you have a lot of events in your system, you may want to increase the buffer size. Next, we open the Tracealyzer installation directory and locate the VXWorks subfolder. This contains a small library, tracealyzer.c and .h, making it easier to use the VXWorks tracing library from the target source code. We just drag and drop this code into the project and select copy. Next, we open usrappinit.c to add some test code. First, we add some includes that I know will be needed. Um, let's fix this indentation. Then we add uh, a function tc test that will be called from the VXWorks console. To initialize the VXWorks tracing library, we use the function tz configure storage. This is documented in tracealizer.h. We use mode continuous to specify that the trace file shall be streamed continuously and specify method file to store the data in a file on the device storage. Finally, we specify the target file name and the five attributes, which are quite important. These attributes ensures that the file is cleared when the tracing is repeated and the file is overwritten. We add a call to TC start to activate the tracing, and this parameter means that all available information is logged. This is recommended to get the full Tracelizer experience. Now we add a small workload in the form of a loop. Let's add a printout of the variable i to the console. And we can also log this as user events in the trace using the function tc events. The first parameter is a name for our user event channel, although this is optional. After this, the interface is very similar to printf. The last part of the loop is a call to task delay to make the workload run over a longer time and capture some more of the VXWorks background activity. Finally, we call TC stop to finish the trace and close the file. Hmm, it seems that we missed something here. Okay, uh, printf is not defined. Um, okay, so let's add an include of stdio.h. And we missed the fifth parameter of TC config storage. This parameter is store on stop, an option that is not relevant in streaming, so we set this to zero. Now it should work.
Finally, we make sure that the project has a simulator connection. And also check that we're using the right connection. Now we're starting the simulator. We type in TC test to call our test function. And there we see the loop counter. Good. Now we can switch over to Tracealyzer. Once the tracing has finished, we can simply drag and drop the trace file into the Tracealyzer window. The trace file is found in the workspace directory in this case. Now it loads the trace. And there we go. Note the diagonal line here in the user event signal plot. This shows the loop variable that we logged with the TC event calls. For more information about Tracealyzer, please visit persepio.com.